Are you ready to stop the self-sabotage and create the life you desire? Well, in order for that to happen, you need to break free from the bad beliefs that are holding your success hostage. You need to optimize the stress by turning it into extra energy for success. And those hurtful habits? Well, we need to give that pain a purpose for progress. Welcome to Stop the Self-Sabotage and Create the Life You Desire podcast. Welcome to the National Guild of Hypnotists St. Louis Virtual Chapter, where you're getting a sneak peek to how us fellow hypnotists geek out on the power of the mind. (laughs) And it is our desire that you walk away with a tip, tool, or technique to improve the quality of your life, as well as meeting uh, a couple of other highly qualified individuals. In fact, we're going to be showcasing one in just a moment, Eric Kendall Banks, who's going to assist you on improving the quality of your life. But uh, for those of you on Stop the Self-Sabotage and Create the Life You Desire podcast, I want to give a shout out to you that um, earners are learners. And whether you're earning uh, that those extra finances in your career or you're earning that health or you're earning that extra love, that's because you're going out there and you're learning how to make it happen. And that's what the people that are here with me today do. I mean, th- this is how they make their living. So welcome, everybody. All right. We're going to start off with the way that we usually do, which is with a celebration, something that is exciting you professionally or could even be personally uh, that that is turning on your RAS, your reticular activating system, to find even more things in life to celebrate. And Eric, because you're going to be our featured present uh presenter today. Let's start off with you. What are you celebrating today? Don, my praise report is also my testimony. I am still here. And given the fact that approximately 450,000 Americans have lost their life to COVID within the last 11 months, as far as I'm concerned, that is an accomplishment As the Honorable Betty Thompson says, if you can look up, you can get up. And I thank God for my ability to look up and each day to get up. Loving that. And you're going to find, listeners, that uh, all through this, Eric is going to give you those pieces of wisdom that you can actually use to make your life better. Okay. Who else wants to share a celebration? I'll, I'll go ahead. Um, I've, I've experienced a rather long string of successes lately. Mm-hmm. Little, some big, uh, some in areas that I am experienced in and some in areas that I have just for the first time explored. So I'm celebrating success. And I'm going to piggyback onto that, that I'm celebrating his success because one of the things he was able to do was rehab our bathroom. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so I'm celebrating that uh, on his. Angie, what do you... I'm going to interrupt her for for just a second because it's funny how you start in one room (laughs) and it kind of spreads, you know? Yeah, it spread. Yeah, (laughs) which is how the power of the mind works. We start in one room of the mind and then that success, that improvement wants to move out to all areas. It wants to ripple out. Angie, what are you celebrating today? I recently, about a week ago, did a women's retreat online, my first online two-day event. And um, and I had five people sign up for my six-month group program after that. Excellent. So that was a very good win. Um, yeah. And I've just, and and the other thing is I set an intention of forgiveness for this year for 2021. And I feel like that is really opening me up to more abundance in a lot of ways with Steve and everything, you know, just everything. Yeah. Excellent. I'm very grateful. Yes. 
it, it's I, I'm getting a theme of gratitude moving through this. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to add on to that gratitude theme. Um, our podcast had a pretty tremendous reach up to last Wednesday, the last Wednesday of January, whenever I decided to move it over to uh, another company. And, you know, you're always nervous uh, when, when you take a risk. Is it going to work out or are you going to lose everything you put your effort into? Well, it worked out. And um, our listenership uh, has um, almost tripled now uh, just over the last few days. And so those of you joining us, maybe your longtime listeners of Stop the Self-Sabotage and Create the Life You Desire, or maybe you're brand new, remember all of us are here to support and revealing who you really are, not who you've been programmed and conditioned to be, but but what you can actually accomplish. Because as Eric was saying, you know, the world's kind of a dark place right now. People need your light more than ever. So use the wisdom of the people that are here in this group. Turn your light on even brighter. So not only can you be blessed, but you can be a blessing to others. Uh, Anyone else that's joined us that would like to give a celebration of some sort? Want to open it up to anybody else that might want to share? All righty then. So, Eric, Mr. Eric Kendall Banks, is going to be our presenter today. Eric and uh, the rest of us go back quite a few years. Not only is he a very accomplished certified hypnotist, but he's also a, an experienced trial attorney. So you might want to reach out to him and ask how he has combined those two together. See, Eric, we met him at a conference. And remember what I said about learners, they're the earners. And after many years of already practicing hypnosis and how to harness the power of the mind, Uh, Eric completed his coursework, passed the certification test, and became a certified hypnotist with the National Guild of Hypnotists. By the way, that's very important for our listeners to know that um, it it can go by state by state, country by country on working with someone and and what guidelines are set up. So you want to make sure that you're working with someone like Eric, like Angie, like Drew, who are certified by a sanctioning body. And the National Guild of Hypnotists is international. And that's who Eric's a member with. He's also, he's taken his certification even further because he's also a member of the, well, the International Certification Board of Clinical Hypnotherapists. So smoking cessation, weight reduction, and confidence building. All of those were a part of Eric's training, but this is where his skill set, this is where his mastery comes forward. Because he wants to partner with you, utilizing hypnosis, and you becoming a more effective communicator. Very entertaining, as you've already heard, with his pearls of wisdom combined with information. He's been quoted in the media, such as the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, the National Public Radio, the Washington Post, and the Wall Street Journal. Engaging, highly quotable. He understands your needs. And what are your needs? You need to be fed with the bread of wisdom while being entertained with the circus of humor. (laughs) So, Eric, what are you giving us today? What are you sharing with us? What are you talking on? I am speaking primarily on the power of hypnosis in general and the ability for us to hypnotize ourselves, in particular. It has been said that every time you're in a room, somebody is hypnotizing you or you're hypnotizing somebody else. And if you can't tell the difference, 
you're being hypnotized. Mm -hmm. I believe that as a transmitter of information, your audience members as receivers of the information need to know something about the source. So running the risk of appearing to be self-aggrandizing, I would like to give a little bit of background information about me and what led me down this path. When I was coming up, I was referred to frequently by a term that we now know is pejorative, offensive, harmful. I was called an idiot savant. I would forget things I shouldn't forget. I would remember things that I shouldn't remember. And in terms of hypnosis, my father, who was a loving, wonderful man, but he was a product of his time. And as such, we did not have timeouts. If you were from St. Louis, what we got were spankings. If you were from Arkansas, where he and my mother were from, we got whoopings. And he gave me whoopings all the time. And generally, it was because I would forget something. Um, he would tell me, Eric, boy, go clean up your room. And several hours later, I'd be in the room, but it wouldn't be clean. And he would say, boy, I told you to straighten up that room. Why didn't you do that? I'm sorry, Daddy. I forgot. You forgot. You're always forgetting something. You're always forgetting something. You're always forgetting something. Notice the programming here. Notice the hypnotic language. And of course, he would follow up with, if you do it, when I tell you to do it, you wouldn't have time to forget. Well, at a very early age, I knew I was a little bit special. And that led me to try to figure out more about myself as well as more about the people around me, exactly what was normal, exa exactly what was extraordinary. And I think that the first path I took in grade school was studying extrasensory perception, ESP. And back then, that was before Al Gore invented the internet, we had to physically go to these places called libraries but I probably checked out everything I could get my hands on that was remotely related to extrasensory perception, which some would say there's nothing extra about it because we all have it. It's just a matter of can we utilize it. That led me to my first self-improvement book other than the Bible that I got when I was 14 years old. I was running cross country. I didn't have the, um, um, the girth or the speed to be a football player, but I thought that I had the um, ability to run cross country. And up until that time, it was the most difficult thing I'd ever done. So once again, trying to find a solution, I grabbed the book, Psycho Cybernetics, by Maxwell, Dr. Maxwell Moss, who of course was a pr um, very prominent um, psychiatrist, not psychologist, psychiatrist. He did have a medical degree and he was a plastic surgeon. And his whole premise was, I can perform plastic surgery and make anybody look the way they want to look. But unless they change their opinion of themselves, they will always view themselves as being ugly. That led me to try to learn more about psychology, spirituality, self-image and the like. 
And that finally led me to hypnosis while I was still in high school. And early on, I read a book that scared me and changed my life for the next few decades. And that was a book that said that hypnosis was so powerful, you had no business messing with it unless you had a master's degree or better in psychology. And unfortunately, I believe that book. And I spent several decades removed from hypnosis, not removed from other things, but removed from hypnosis. As an example, for many years, I was a Rosicrucian. I identified as a Christian, and I still do, but I was also a member of the um, ancient mystical order of the Rosa Cross, a non-secretarian organization of men and women dedicated to the research, study, and practical application of the natural and cosmic laws of the universe. I did that for a number of years. I was a member of Toastmasters International for 10 years, and I pretty much was concerned about utilizing and developing my full potential, but it did not include hypnosis. Around 2015, I was, um, I had issues, I guess we all do, but my issues manifested itself with insomnia. So I got an app, since there's an app for everything, you just have to have the power of discernment. I got an app called Digia Peel. And you, the app was free. You got an introductory message and then other messages were like $5 a piece. And it was very good. It was relaxing lessons slash affirmations set behind peaceful, relaxing music. And that gave me an idea, I said, well, since I do identify as a Christian, wouldn't it be great to develop an app that instead of having secular affirmations, such as every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better, I could develop an app with spiritual truths, such as greater is he who is within me than he who is within the world, or I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. And otherwise, in other words, what you focus on, you manifest and you attract what you're thinking, good and bad. So I'm thinking about this app. So I'm at my local neighborhood health food store and I pick up this alternative newspaper and there was a page advertisement for the first Heartland Hypnosis Conference. And I said to myself, well, you know, I used to dibble and dab with hypnosis. And perhaps if I go to this conference and learn a little bit more about how hypnosis can positively affect the mind, it will help me to develop my app. Well, six years later, I am still studying hypnosis every day. I have not developed my app yet, but time is my friend, it's not my enemy. I still plan on doing so. Now that's a little bit about me, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I would like to talk with the group's permission a little bit about hypnosis in general. I realize that there's all kinds of people from every walk of life listening to this podcast. And some of you may be familiar with hypnosis. Some people may be strangers. 
So please let me introduce to some and reinforce to others some basic concepts of hypnosis. One, it is a natural state. There's nothing hocus pocus or magical about it. Sometimes the results can seem to be magical, but the process is not. We slip in and out of hypnosis several times a day, most particularly when we're getting up in the morning and when we're going to bed at night. The brain has approximately four levels. For those of you who I have not already put to sleep, you're operating at the beta level. We're at the beta level. The next lowest, slowest level is the alpha level. That's where the subconscious can be entered into. It is the never, never land between being awake and being asleep. It is where we hypnotists can do what's known as bypass the critical factor. We help the people that we're working with get out of their own way so that we can address the subconscious. And it is a yin yang type of thing. The subconscious programs the conscious, but we can use the conscious to program the subconscious. None of us are willing or livers to um, re re do away with the waste, the solid waste in our body. None of us is telling or telling the kidneys what to do. Um, to a certain extent, we can affect our heartbeat through meditation, prayer, hypnosis, imagery, and the like. But many times we're breathing and our heart are beating without us thinking about it. But by using the natural process of hypnosis, we can affect our own brain state and the brain state of those that we're working with. The jargon that hypnotists use is that hypnotist is referred to as the operator and the um, person who's being hypnotized is referred to as the subject. I reject that. I think it's unfortunate, just like I think that the term idiot savant is unfortunate. Artistic savant is much more proper. It is much more beneficial. Well, I don't use the term, I'm the operator and the person who's hypnotized is the subject. That artificially suggests that I don't have, I have a degree of control that the person I'm working with does not have. Because my belief is all hypnosis in reality is self-hypnosis. And as the hypnotist, all I am is a guide. All I am is a facilitator mm -hmm. to help the person get to where they want to be. There is nothing in my power that can make the person mm -hmm. I'm working with change. Another myth, hypnosis is not sleep. If you are asleep, you're not hypnotized. And if you're not, if you're hypnotized, you are not asleep. Hypnosis is a highly relaxed state where the person can focus better and achieve greater levels of concentration, which promotes suggestibility. In, in, in hypnosis, you never lose control. You cannot hypnotize someone to violate a core value or to run afoul of their moral compass. Preparing for this talk, I read on that um, great resource of accurate information, the internet, about this hypnotist in Russia. 
who didn't need a gun to rob banks. All she had to do was go and engage in conversational hypnosis, also known as indirect hypnosis, also known as the Ericksonian method. And after a few seconds of talking to the bank teller, the bank teller would give the hypnotist all of the money in the drawer. Well, I haven't seen any corroboration of that. And I don't believe it's true. Hypnosis is not mind control. Now, I respect stage hypnotists. Stage hypnotists probably have done more to inform the public about hypnotism than anything else. I respect stage hypnotists. I enjoy going to the shows. I find it to be very entertaining, but that's what it is. It's entertainment. And that's not what I do. I will never make somebody bark like a dog. I will never make somebody cluck like a chicken. That is not what I do. I help people achieve what they desire through hypnosis. And of course, as part of my training, my certification process, I had to learn the two main states or the two main goals that most people come to hypnotists for. And that is weight reduction. Notice I didn't say weight loss because when you lose something, what do you want to do? You want to find it. So it's not weight loss, it's weight reduction. Also, we've all been trained with smoking cessation, not stop smoking. Because when you're driving a car and you get to a stop sign, what do you want to do? You want to start back again. You want to proceed. So it's not stop smoking. It is smoking cessation. There's a spectrum. And hypnosis is part of the same spectrum as prayer, as neuro-linguistic programming, as meditation. They're all parts of the same whole. And we know from neuro-linguistic programming how powerful our words are. Whether our words are, well, daddy always told me that I always forget, so I will continue to always forget. Or whether our words are, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, anyone can be hypnotized, but there's a spectrum of hypnotize, hypnoto, of the ability to be hypnotized. If I could pronounce all the words in my vocabulary, I would be dangerous. And you'll frequently find that I break my own rules because the rule is never say anything about yourself that you would get insulted if somebody else said about you. And the rule also is the subconscious mind does not know the difference between reality and a joke. So if I program myself with self-deprecating humor, if I'm not careful, the same jokes that I'm telling myself will come to pass. Now, about 20% of all people are very, very susceptible to hypnosis. These are the type of people that stage hypnotists look for. And there are suggestibility tests and there are ways to figure out who in the audience will put on the best show because they're most likely to be able to fall into a deep hypnotic state. But just like 20% of the people are very susceptible to hypnosis, 20% of the people are highly resistant. And as I've said to some of the people on this call before, I am very, very, very resistant to hypnosis. I believe in it, I practice it, 
I like being hypnotized, but I'm a hard nut to crack. Some people would say I'm a little bit um, anal like that. But to offer another praise report, Drew Ferguson is one of the few people who's actually been able to put me in a, or help me to achieve. He didn't put me any place. He helped me to achieve a deep hypnotic state. So I know it works. There were the appropriate convincers because one of the hardest things about hypnosis is convincing the person after they've been hypnotized that they've been actually hypnotized. Now, if somebody is afraid of public speaking and after several hypnotic sessions, they're no longer afraid of public speaking and they are confident, it is not uncommon for them to say, well, I don't think that hypnosis worked, but for some reason, I'm not afraid of public speaking anymore. Well, as long as the end result is achieved, that is what's most important. And finally, we've all been hypnotized. How many of us have driven down a highway that we're familiar with and we missed our exit? Well, we didn't crash the car, but our mind was someplace else. We had the presence of mind, the muscle memory, the situational awareness to maintain control of the car, but we weren't thinking and we missed our exit. Some would call that highway hypnosis. How many of us have watched a movie that we knew was not real? We knew it was fiction, but we still ended up laughing or crying. I finally got around to watching, since we're self-medicating on our screens, since we can't go outside, I finally got around to watching Crazy Rich Asians. And that was one of the few movies where I laughed and towards the end, I also cried. Well, I didn't suspend my disbelief completely. I knew that I was watching a movie on my TV set, but somehow I allowed myself to get caught up in a good way because I like laughing and I like crying over something that's good. So it was a very enjoyable experience, but I allowed it to happen because we've all been hypnotized. Now, I don't want anybody to think that you were lured to this podcast based on false premises. I said that I was going to talk about self-hypnosis. And for the last few minutes, I'm going to go through a self-hypnosis exercise. For those of you who have your smartphones, you can record this if you like. It's certainly not copywritten. Or if you like, you can go to my website, imagerelationsllc.com, send me an email, and I will send you an executive summary of a continuing legal education course that I presented last fall on stress reduction and self-hypnosis. Now, in terms of full transparency, I'm going to tell you the four things that we're going to do. First, we're gonna make a conscious effort to relax. Now, relaxation usually comes through boredom or slowing the thoughts in our brain. If you want, you can count sleep. If you are a Bing Crosby White Christmas fan, you can count your blessings instead of sleep. But the technique that we're going to spend three to five minutes doing is going down a flight of stairs, but you can use any metaphor that you choose. Once the subconscious is ac ac um, accessed through relaxation, once we transition from beta to alpha, we will program our self-conscious with some positive self-talk, affirmations, 
positive thoughts. You don't have to be Joel Osteen, but you do have to train yourself to realize that the glass is always 90% full and it is never 10% empty. And there's always, always, always something to be grateful for. So in the next few seconds before we begin the exercise, I would like for each individual who's listening to this podcast to think about something in your own life that you want to work on through self-hypnosis. Third, we will anchor the positive thought with your favorite color. And fourth, we'll reemerge from the alpha state to the beta state. You can practice this in your home, in your office, even in the courtroom, but not while you're driving. You don't have to have your eyes closed, but sometimes it may be helpful. I invite you to begin to think of yourself in the first person in a manner that resembles the following. I permit myself to take a five minute break so that I can relax, regroup, and reemerge better than before. Today, I pretend that I'm at the top of a wonderful but short and safe staircase. And as I look down, I see a peaceful scene from my past where I was happy and relaxed. While holding on to the handrail, I slowly and purposely take a step down and immediately feel a sense of peace and well-being. As I mindfully take another step down, I am comforted by the relaxation that comes from my deep breaths and my slowed heart rate. The next step allows me to temporarily forget about my surroundings while I realize that I am still in complete control and I can instantly return to the level of my highest awareness should the need arise. Now, as I step off the staircase, I'm in a happy place that represents a time in my life where I enjoyed a high level of peace and tranquility. Now that I have imagined myself in my happy place, I can relax every muscle in my body while I remind myself how wonderful I really am. With each breath, I accept that every day in every way, I am getting better and better. As my heart continues to be slower but stronger, I am grateful that I have a 100% success rate for surviving challenging circumstances and I will overcome and learn from any temporary difficulty that may present itself. As I allow my brain waves to slow down, I accept the programming of my subconscious to realize that I am all right, and this too shall pass. I'm thankful that I accept that everything in my life is not always good, but I will always see the good in every situation. As I enjoy this blissful state, I'm comforted by the fact that while I cannot remain here forever, I can return whenever I desire. My subconscious is continuously being transformed so that I will continue to perform in my highest level in a relaxed and comfortable manner. For the next five days, I will be reminded of this every time I see my favorite color. Whenever I see my favorite color, I will take five seconds and mentally or verbally state something that I'm grateful for. Whenever I see my favorite color, I will accept the fact that no matter what the difficulty, no matter what the challenge, I will be all right because I'm a good person. I'm a pleasure to be around and it is a pleasure for me to be around other people. Whenever I see my favorite color, I will relax my face and even with my mask on, people will see the joy that I have in my heart. 
Now, as I prepare to return to my daily responsibilities, I will do so refreshed and comforted. As I walk up the first step, I allow my breathing and my heartbeat to return to normal. As I climb up the next step, I allow my conscious mind to become dominant and for my subconscious mind to shift to the background. And as I reach the top steps, I am completely awake, aware of my surroundings and safe in every way. Thank you for allowing me to be part of this podcast. That was excellent, Eric. <laughs> Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you. I didn't want to come back. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, questions for Eric. What questions do people have? Angie, go for it. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. That was great. Um, you were mesmerizing me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So I just have a question. Over the years that I've been doing this, I've had a few people tell me that they were hesitant to come to me because of their Christian background. And I'm just, I just want you to address um, how you've experienced this because you said you're a Christian as well. So the idea was that um, hypnosis is the work of the devil, you know, and uh, have you had that before and how would you address that? Um, I have it all the time. And what I say includes, show me the evidence from the Bible that would suggest that it is the work of the devil. There is none. Um, and more importantly, the Bible tells us you will know them by their fruits. Mm -hmm. So what are the fruits of a hypnotist? Are hypnotists going around presenting themselves at banks and hypnotizing the teller to turn over all the money in the drawer? Or do we have the fruits of a hypnotist helping people to achieve what they want to achieve in life? I dare say it's the latter. And if hypnosis is helping people achieve good things, it's from God. It's not from the devil. Mm -hmm. That's a great answer. Um, the other question that I had, just one other, is that, you know, today, if you turn on the television, there's so much negativity. And there's a lot of mental health issues going on right now with a lot of people. And you know, we talk about hypnosis and do you believe that people by listening to repetitive news broadcasts about the doom and the gloom and all that, that um, people are in a way being hypnotized by the programming and the messages out there that are all com constantly coming at them? I do. And once again, I think that there's a spectrum. Some would call it persuasion. Some would call it indoctrination. Some would call it hypnosis. Some would call it um, education even. I will say this though, a coping mechanism for me, even though if left to my own devices, I would be a news junkie, but I don't think it's super healthy. I probably, and because I believe that um, television is a lot more impactful than the radio because it allows you to deal with not only your sense of hearing, but your sense of sight as well. So I limit myself to about 40 minutes of watching the news on TV a day, generally 30 minutes of the national, national news, 10 minutes of the local news. In addition to that, I shut off my screens about an hour before I go to bed my screens being my television, my computer, my iPad, my iPhone. I will say this, I listen to music as I read about an, you know, an hour before I go to bed, but I'm not watching my phone because I want to start settling down and I want my 
mind to start drifting into alpha. I wanted to leave beta. Mm -hmm. And if I'm watching the 10 o'clock news right before bedtime and seeing all the things that are wrong with the world, that's going to be the last conscious act that's getting into my spirit before I go to sleep. And I don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. I love how you just uh, phrased that, Eric, the, the conscious act that is allowing something into our spirit. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of goes back to what you said, Angie, as far as the news, is it programming us in a way, but it's programming us in a way that's painful. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we have to have already um, something there that will allow those suggestions to come in, but it's what are we focusing on? Are we focusing right. on um, the challenges in the world, or what is it that you said during this session, Eric, it was about not everything that happens to us will be good, but we'll find the good that happens in every situation. That's correct. I yeah. got that one. Got that one. <laughs> it's kind of like the um, biblical verse admonishing us to count it all to joy. Now, it's not going to all be joyful, but we need to count it to joy because we can learn from it. We can improve as a result of it. We can have our difficulties turn us into better place people. I mean, the difference between a lump of cold and a diamond is pressure over time. Mm-hmm. And that we don't crumble. Yeah. Um, any other questions for Eric? Okay, I've got mine. Um, what, at what time, Eric, do you find that your, as you were saying, your, your spirit is most open for suggestion, you know, our, our, our powerful mind, what time of day do you think that happens for you? And then do you just focus on what you're saying? Is it what you're feeling? Is it what you're seeing internally that you use to then deliver your, deliver suggestions to yourself? What works best for me is right early in the morning, right before I get up. And I usually spend about a half an hour before I get out of bed um, doing affirmations, self-hypnosis, meditation, prayer, um, stretching while I'm still in bed. And that is followed by about a half an hour of um, Bible study, prayer, and then I spend 10 minutes on the app, um, Calm, C-A-L-M. And I have a yearly subscription and I spend about 10 minutes going through the meditation exercises that are on the app. We hypnotists do not have a monopoly on self-improvement. We hypnotists do not have a monopoly on persuading people. Many of the techniques that the hypnotists use are similar to what evangelists use, lawyers use, politicians use, used car salespeople use. It's the same type of techniques. The difference is you're going to a hypnotist to improve and you are voluntar voluntarily allowing yourself to be influenced in the direction that you want to go anyway. So as we begin to conclude, how can people um, reach out to you if they're like, you know, what Eric said makes sense, and I want to see what the next step would be. H how are people going to contact you, Eric? Well, my funnel, as you marketing people would refer to it, is my website. It has all my contact information on it, my phone number, my brick and mortar address, my email address, my e-fax number, <laughs> everything's on the webpage. 
And once again, that's imagerelationsllc.com, one word. Excellent. Okay, so um, I'm going to share a couple of ahas that I had from Eric's presentation. And if anyone else would also like to share those, uh, he said, we need to know something about the source. And even though he presented it as knowing more about him, uh, so then you could feel comfortable uh, about what he was sharing. What he was really directing us all to is knowing about our own source, who we really are, and becoming aware that that's what we're supposed to be tapping into. He said, becoming a product of time. And, And that's it. Who we are right now is simply based on our conditioning over the years. Um, But yet you can peel off that conditioning and and that programming to reveal who you really are. Um, And he said, time is my friend. How many times have we all said that it's not? (laughs) And, And so he's showing us how it can be by programming the power of the mind to come forward. So that that those were my ahas, Eric. Um, did anybody else have an aha that they wanted to share? I'll share. Um, I also, time is my friend. Like that's a perfect paradigm shift for me, Eric, because it's usually, I don't have enough time, right? And so I appreciated that. I really also enjoyed hearing more about you and your personal story that led you to hypnosis and also your vulnerability and sharing the story, how you had a critical father, you know, and you were able to use these techniques to really heal that part of you that felt insecure about that. And so, uh, and I, I, I love that. So I appreciated that a lot. Just overall, um, you have a very calming effect, I think. And I'd love for you to say someday how how do you use your trial attorney work and being an attorney to with hypnosis you know how you use that so you don't have to do that today but you know that's another like presentation it. coming right. isn't it <laughs> yeah um anybody else have an aha that they would like to share okay So um, we're going to go around, we're going to end with Eric, we're going to go around the hypnotists that are on here, please share your contact information. Drew, we're going to go ahead and start with you. Uh, Drew at drewdawnferguson.com, very simply spelled, uh, phone number uh, 636-699-7791, and there you go. All right, Angie. It's Angie at harmonyharbor.com. Angie at HarmonyHarbor.com. My website's HarmonyHarbor.com. And my contact is 314-422-6520. And Eric, what do you want to leave the listeners with? What do you want to close with? We are, I would like to close with, we are the story that we tell ourselves over and over again. And if we want to change our lives, we need to change our stories. Uh, And I cannot think of a better way to say, let anyone here that's been um, in this meeting, uh, but especially Eric, help you write that next chapter. So thank you so much. It was an honor uh, for all of you to join us today. And we hope to see you again next month. So thank you, everybody. Go out and be blessed so you can be a blessing. Bye now. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.